Hi guys, this is Kwame Tanner and welcome back to part five of my tutorial, Assisted Living Surveyor Checklist. It's pretty much everything the surveyor will be looking for when they expect your assisted living facility, uh, whether it's going to be a new facility or an existing facility. Um, this facility is going to cover uh, the tour of the facility, the physical tour, not we already covered the book reviews and the policies and procedures. This is going to actually cover the actual physical facility, what they're going to be looking for when they come inside your facility. All right, number one is the general plant requirements. Um, it's pretty general. They want to make sure your facility is in good repair. It's clean. It's free of any hazardous objects. Uh, free of any rodents, um, make sure you have proper bathroom installs, um, you have to have certain um, uh, grab bars in the bathroom. I'll cover that in the next video, but they just want to make sure your, your facility is in uh, general and in, in good repair. Another one is security. So you have to have uh, chimes on each door, each exit door. So if someone leaves off the back door, you have to have a chime to let staff know that the back door has been open. Um, you have to have the, the perimeter be secure from any outside threats or any hazards. Um, then they are going to do a sweep of the outside as well. And we're going to cover a common use area. Now, a common use area is a dining room, living room, um, outdoor, any recreational space. You have to have some sort of a common common use space for your clients. You can't just have rooms with with nothing else for them to do. I mean, houses aren't even made like that. But uh, even rules with you have to have 35 square feet of common use or multi space for space per licensed bed. So, say if you have eight beds, you have to have 35 square feet times eight, and that's still not a lot. I I would I would even say triple that honestly to have a nice facility um, to have decent common use space. And I also work when I tour facility, potential facilities for my clients, I take these measurements. Um, this is one of the first things I do when I walk to a facility. I make sure it has proper common use space as well. Um, living room. Uh, each such a living facility has to have a living room, um, at least one living room for resident use. Um, it shall ensure that the rooms, they should ensure that the rooms are well ventilated, easily accessible furnished with a sufficient number of reading lamps and tables and comfortable chairs or sofas on a resident's needs. Um, you, you can have outdoor, semi-indoor, outdoor um, living space, um, but you have to arrange, you can have provide for an uh, activity space outside that can be considered a living room. You can have adequate light, you have to have adequate lighting outside space during, during all times the residents have access to this space. So each, um, common use area or living rooms, living room space, you have to make sure that it's well lit and it has proper seating and uh, safety measures for each client. Or else you have to separate that area from your assisted living program. Now public toilets. So this is more for um, assisted living facility that are 17 beds or more. You have to have a public restroom. Otherwise, anything under under 17 beds, you don't have to have a public a public restroom, a public toilet. Dining room. An assisted living facility shall provide provide a well lit, adequately ventilated, and a appropriately furnished dining area. Must have enough seating for every resident to eat dinner at the same time. So you can't you can't say, okay, we have eight residents, but we only have a four table dining room table. So you have to have at least eight chairs at the dining room table or you can have multiple tables so each client can sit and eat at the same time. Now living room. Um, another living room. We already covered this but it must be well ventilated and clean, accessible, um, sufficient number of reading lamps and tables, enough comfortable seating for for all residents to sit without a wait for seat. So that's kind of the same principle as the dining room. You have to have uh, seating, comfortable seating for everyone to sit outside their rooms without having to stand. 
now here we're going to go over a few items for the kitchen. Um, kitchen is going to be one of their main uh, areas where they're going to focus a lot of attention on. That's why you have so many regulations, um, just be for food and safety regulations. And even when you, when you um, even to own a assisted living facility or work at one, you're going to have to take a food and health safety class. But even for your kitchen, they're going to look for um, food prep area to make sure you have a clean and usable surfaces. Um, you have to have space and equipment to wash and sanitize utensils. You have to have ice making capabilities, so you have to be able to make ice. Um, you have to provide uh, refrigerate, refrigeration operable at or below 45 degrees Fahrenheit. And you shall provide a freezer that can operate below zero, zero degrees Fahrenheit. And heating and air conditioning. So each facility must have at least one thermostat per building. And that's for one to eight beds. It um, Regulations kind of fluctuate around for when you go a little bit above eight beds. And that's for the kitchen as well. For example, with the kitchen above 16 beds, you have to have a uh, a different kind of fire system in your kitchen where it shuts off the gas if you have if your fire alarm goes off so just the regulations kind of get funky the more beds you get um, you, if you have radiators you have to have them covered um, you have to have a ventilated bathroom so if you have a, a bathroom you have to have it ventilated where you you know most bathrooms now have ventilated bathrooms um, and you have to have ventilated soil utility rooms and if you have a designated smoking room that has to be ventilated as well Um, telephones we kind of covered this in, in the other uh, in the other session but we have you have to have at least one common use phone that means one phone with a number that all clients can use you have to have the telephone number to the facility posted by the phone in case they want to give their number to, to friends and family um, for 16 plus beds you have to have a second common use phone but that's only if nine nine or more residents don't have a private phone a cell phone so right now, most seniors, they'll, clients, they'll have cell phones now. So and just in case you have 16 or more beds, if they don't, you have to get a second common use phone. And if you have 17 or more beds, you have to have a wiring in each room so they can have their own phone in their room. And residence room and furnishing. So you have to have, um, it's a, a couple of different rules that go with, you know, clients rooms but I highlighted a few and like I said I do consult and I can help you through the rest of these but um, assisted living facility program must provide at least 80 square feet of functional space for a single occupancy room so if you have a single room you at least need 80 square feet which is small but if you want at least if you want to have a shared room you at least have to have 120 square feet so um, a lot of people when I go to the yeah, potential facilities and they want to share rooms and it's, it's not even 100 square feet and a it's going to be uncomfortable you're not going to have anyone that's going to want to actually live in the room because it's going to be too tight and b it's not it's not even legal you have to, so you have to know how much square feet you're working with in each room um, and if a resident has a double occupancy room um, they you can they can request a curtain or a screen between both beds i do it anyway and that's another thing i'm going to offer in a second in the next video in the sixth and final installment i'm going to give you where i get my uh, products for for cheap um, the, the grab bars beds and things like that but um and i'll show you where i get my bed my room dividers as well for the shared rooms and this is um, just continuing on resident rooms and furnishings um, you have to have unless a resident brings his own personal furnishing otherwise specified in a resident agreement the assisted living program must provide the filing for each resident a bed which may not be a roll away cot or folding bed so you can't give anyone like a roll away bed or a cot and a bed has to be at least 36 inches wide and it must be a clean and comfortable room and there's other things you're going to have to have for your rooms you're going to have to have um, two pillows per bed you're going to have to have a you're going to have to offer a client a lockbox it's going to have to have a nightstand it's going to have to have um, a lamp on a nightstand um, so that's just all things that are going to be mandatory for the rooms that they're going to look for and they need a lockbox as well i don't know if i said that something they can lock their money or belongings in that they don't want that they don't want out 
to be just if they have a roommate. And again, like I said in the last video, I do offer um, consulting services. I um, help clients start assisted living facilities from um, step one to finish. Um, I also uh, consult with uh, existing assisted living facility owners, and I also help uh, clients, find, assisted living facilities find uh, clients as well. So if you have any empty bids, you can uh, just click the link and um, register and we'll help you out with that as well. Thank you guys and stay tuned for the next one. The next one will uh, touch bases on um, the actual uh, plant requirements, which means what what uh, the actual physical um, items they're gonna be looking for to be in your assisted living facility.